All right, guys, let's get that front axle on the Gladiator fixed. Hey everybody, it's Bo with Exos Jeeps, and we build badass Jeeps. Now today, we're gonna do a little update on the Gladiator. As you guys know, uh, a few months ago, we took it out wheeling for the very first time, and within a few hours, we ended up breaking the driver's side axle shaft here. Previously on Exodus Jeeps. All right, so we just got done uh, driving off of the top of smoking Butthole. Yeah, it's the name of the trail. So we took the truck up to the top and then we started coming down. Somehow, I don't know how, but we ended up in that crack with the uh, driver front wheel here. As a result, broken U-joint. It didn't feel like we were stuck at all. It just felt like we kind of fell into a, much like any ledge you fall, fall off of. Looks like we lost the U-joint here in the front, connecting the uh, axle shaft to the stub shaft that drives the outer wheel here. Here the, the ears for the U-joint are, are bent out and the axle shaft here, inner axle shaft, is actually broken. We'll see what Spicer says about the warranty on these axles. Now originally when we tried to get it warrantied, Spicer denied the warranty. Do we have your word? And in fact, they never did honor the warranty. Because that's the fun of it. They just said we were abusing the axle. That's a complete load of crap. Whatever that means, we ended up having to buy the axle shaft itself. Originally, they told us it would take some 90 something days to get the axle shaft. So we just gave up on it. Lo and behold, about three to four weeks later, the replacement axle shaft actually did show up, but we've been so busy with so many other builds and projects going on in the shop, we just haven't had time to install it. And now it is uh, right before Christmas as we're videoing this. A little bit slow in the shop, and we got some time today. We're gonna go ahead and swap this out, and we're gonna show you guys actually how easy it is. Now, some of you might think it's more complicated than what it, what it uh, looks like, but to be honest with you, we're gonna show you the down and dirty quick way to replace the axle shaft assembly today and uh, get this thing back in four wheel mode and not just three wheel. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the tire and wheel off. After that, we're gonna load the Jeep back down on a jack stand, a little bit higher than if it was just sitting level. The reason we're doing that is to put the axle on an incline like this and have all the oil go to the passenger side of the diff. That way, when we pull the shaft out, we don't lose any oil. Next, I'm gonna take a 964 Allen wrench and remove the six bolts here on the uh, locking hub. Once I take that off, we'll show you in a second, but there's a snap ring on the end of the uh, stub shaft. We'll take that off. Once we get all this off, you'll see, but there's uh, about four nuts holding the entire spindle hub to the steering knuckle. Once we take those four nuts off, because we took the snap ring off the end of the shaft, we will just pull the whole bearing assembly off of the steering knuckle without having to disturb any of the preload on the spindle bearings in here. So it's real important that you don't just start taking everything apart just to change the axle shaft assembly. It's really just as simple as this. I'm gonna get started taking these off, then Blake's gonna jump over here and pull the brake caliper off of the uh, steering knuckle so that we can get that rotor off, get to the nuts holding the whole spindle assembly on the nut, on the steering knuckle. Then we get into uh, changing out the shafts. We got the snap ring off the end of the shaft right here. And Blake has removed the six nuts that hold the spindle assembly to the steering knuckle. So I just gave it a little tap, boop, and the stub shaft fell out. So now we're gonna pull this off and uh, start swapping shafts out. Dust shield's in the way. Got a screwdriver here. Pry that guy up. Oh my gosh, look at that. All right, so. <sighs> the ears on the stub shaft were so bent. In fact, I've taken this out before, and you're gonna see in a minute when I pull the uh, inner shaft out. Before I could get it, I had to go in with a grinder and a cutting this and actually cut the ears off of the inner shaft. So, stick a pry bar back there and pull this guy out. And there you go. You see, I had to cut it 
you know, it's not a super big common failure, but it does happen every now and then that the U, these U-joints do fail. Typically, you get stuck in a crack or something like that, and some really sticky rocks probably turned at the same time. Allegedly. And you get a little acceleration, and boom, U-joint breaks. I'm also the guy who would never admit that sort of thing. It usually takes the shafts out with it, so there's not much you can do to stop it from happening. Now we get those out. We're going to throw in the new shaft and get everything put back together. All right, Blake. that ABS wire. Uh, all right, hold that up to get these started. Pretty reasonably priced parts too. I think this whole axle assembly, uh, both shafts and U-joint are less than 300 bucks. So it's not the end of the world uh, if they break. Well, at least on the driver's side, pretty short shafts, so uh, they're not that expensive, but as you can see, it's not a terribly complicated fix if it happens. Real important, you want to make sure that that ABS wire is pulled up all the way in here when you're tapping that back down because you don't want it getting caught out here in any of this rotating assembly. Here, what? Tighten yours up. While Blake finishes that, I'm going to put the snap ring back on the end of the shaft here. In order to get the snap ring on, I need to make sure that the groove is exposed exposed and in order to get that I uh, stuck a screwdriver back here in between the housing and the uh, inner shaft and pried it out a little bit this way because it was stuck back inside a little bit and that's basically what the snap ring does is it keeps the shaft from floating around too much and hitting the housing when it is rotating so separate that Getting that snap ring spread apart and on the shaft. It helps to have your screwdriver handy. Push back there, hold it in that groove.
And I know it's really hard to see what we're doing in there, but look at the shaft before you insert it, and that way you get a pretty good look of what's going on at the end of it. You can tell about where the depth of that groove is. Uh, but basically, that's a coiled uh, snap ring, so you're gonna just kinda unspray it a little bit, get it unwound a little, just a little bit, not too much. You don't wanna damage it. And you're gonna kinda work it in there, get it started in that groove, and as you get it started, then you just kinda Maybe you even have a couple of screwdrivers, but you're gonna to wanna to have one handy just to hold it in the groove, kind of hold it, keep it from popping back out, and then you're gonna slowly wind it into that groove. It's really hard to show you what's going on there, but you'll get, a, get an idea of it as, uh, well, even when you take it apart, you'll kind of understand what we're doing. But that's pretty much it right there as far as getting everything replaced. From that, this point forward, it's just reassembly in the same order we took it apart. One thing to note is when you put the cap back on, oops, be careful with these screws. They're small. You don't want to use any kind of power tools on them because they'll break off pretty easy in here and you'll be taking everything back apart to buy a hub assembly. This o-ring is really important. It's going to want to fall out too. So as you're putting this back together, be careful with the stuff that you don't pinch any of it. These six screws that hold the cap in, they do have an O-ring on them. Most of the time you want to replace them. These are in decent shape, so we're going to keep them the way they are. But if you get too rowdy on them as you're putting it together, you can damage those. Uh, they're just there to keep keep some, keep the moisture out, keep the water out in case you go through any low water crossing, stuff like that, dirt. Um, there is just a little bit of gap there so that it, you could get contaminants in there if there wasn't an O-ring. Also, you're going to see that there's three spots here on this locking hub assembly right here. As you reassemble it, they're gonna line up just like this. It's gonna help you get these, these little guys started whenever you screw it back together. So, put that guy there. Yeah, it's seated nice. Get some of these started by hand. Now I want to keep my hand pushed up against her so that o-ring doesn't slip out as we're reassembling and it gets pinched. We'll take our Allen, start tightening things up. Just like anything, if you can use a star pattern as you're tightening it, go for it. And they do have O-rings on them, so you don't need to get them super, super tight. Anytime you have an O-ring seal, you don't want to over-tighten it because you can't damage the O-ring. We're going to see if we can get uh, get back in here with a torque wrench on these uh, these nuts that are holding the spindle up to the knuckle. We'll put the rotor back on, put the caliper on, and that's pretty much it. So, all right, Blake, you want to see if we can get a torque wrench on those? How can I open my phone? Siri, open the phone. Hey Siri, unlock my phone. I can unlock your iPhone. Been there. What the? But you don't have a, like a button on the other side? Yes. Yeah, why don't you gotta turn it off like this? No, just hold it. I did. No, just hold it for like a fucking minute. I think these stupid phones, man. Can we just have a flip phone again? Hey Siri, call Apple Help. If you need help, you can contact Apple Support. You can't click on it. <laughs> can't click on it. Hey Siri, call Apple Support. If you need help, you can contact Apple Support. 
I want you to do it. Hey Siri, call Apple support. Here's how to get help from Apple support. Getting a new phone today, babe. Merry Christmas to me. Blake is done, bolting everything back up. Not a very complicated uh, fix. If you were to break something like this, you could probably fix it. Um, I wouldn't say on the trail, but somewhere not too far from the trail if you had the extra parts handy with you. As mentioned before, they're not very expensive. If you want to have one on hand, that way you don't have to wait weeks to get a replacement part for it. it takes about an hour to fix it at tops. My thoughts on the UD60 Zach. UD60 axles is that they are a decent axle for the price. I don't think that they're the best aftermarket axle available. Um, they're a crate axle. I believe that there's some false advertising in the whole made in the USA concept uh, or claim that they put on the crate. Uh, I know for a fact that the axles, a lot of components in these axles are not made in America. Uh, they're probably assembled here, but they're not made here 100%. You know, that's, is that a big deal? I don't know, a lot of stuff nowadays is like that. So the problem with that being is when our shaft failed, there were not any available in the United States. It took a few weeks to get a replacement part. So if you got the funds at hand, if you're fine running the UD60s, you might want to have extra parts laying around available in case it does break. But yeah, all in all, I think there are some better axles available, but for the price point, they seem to get the job done. That's it for this video. Welcome to 2020. If you guys have anything that you want to see that we haven't covered yet, do me a favor, email me, leave something in the comments, whatever you got to do to let us know, do it. And we'll uh, do our best to make a video on that and see you out on the trails. Don't miss any of Bubba's adventures, builds, and tips. Click here to subscribe. Click here to watch another video. Stay tuned.